Right, so I'm just going to um, give you a quick little tour of the studio. Um, built this back a little over 10 years ago. Um, I used to have another studio and it came to the crunch where um, we decided we'd stay in, the, in this house and we'd build the studio where the garage was. And my parents and I, we all lived here at one stage. So um, I'm just going to show you uh, this is a printing press. It's a Rochette and it's a, a, a fine size and I bought it many years ago after the studio in, in um, Cork Street. We burnt down and made no home and I was looking around and there was nothing, nothing in Ireland really available. So I eventually found this uh, in a magazine, Printmaking Today or something like that. And it was shipped over and uh, it's the best thing I ever did. And then over here are um, my plant chefs and the nose are all different. Um, like my life's work really, I suppose you could say. So I just have different drawers for different things. So they're all additions and old work and newest work and work that's gone out uh, for shows and different things like that. Over here are paper, it's a paper plant chest, so that's all. But well, it's not all the paper, paper everywhere in the house really to be honest. Even under the sofa in the sitting room. Uh, and on top of that, um, the smaller prints I tend to leave to dry before they go into the lodgers to dry for three weeks. And then these are some of my older plates. Uh, when I used to work on steel uh, in, since COVID and into the lockdown, I, with the help of two agility awards, I managed to move from the very toxic uh, etching method to a, a much greener method which involves just um, acetate plates and a uh, dry point needle. There's no acids involved so it's uh, safer for me as well as the environment. So there's the ink, where I ink up, make my ink and here is where I ink up the plates. This is an old hot plate that I used to use when I had uh, metal plates, I can't use that for acetate because it just melt uh, in there are different solvents and things like that. And then over here is where I um, dry off the paper after. I usually soak it overnight in, um, I spray it and soak it in a plastic bag and it's then ready just to be blotted off and used on the printing press. So I think that's, that's about it. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. All my tools are here. There's all sorts of wonderful looking things. These are the favourite ones. Some have been gifted to me. Like this one from Jackie. And then these are the ones I've bought over the year. These are roulettes. So they call sort of dotty patterns on the plates. And they're wonderful, really, all these things. Like instruments of torture. But they, they're really they're great, great old things. Um, so that's it really. I almost forgot, these are my gelatine rollers. They're not really made of gelatine uh, anymore, they're kind of composite. But they are what I use when I'm doing a roll-up uh, for colour on, on my plates. Uh, recently I've been using mostly just black and white, uh, you know, just black ink. And then uh, uh, through the series of the Hidden in Plain Sight, there's a touch of red running through all of them, and kind of a rusty red, and that just brings them all together. So um, those I will use again in the future, but just at the moment I can't use them. Um, I'm just going to show you a quick print that um, I made for the Simon fundraiser a couple of years ago, and it, it's just on an acetate plate, and it's a dry point, and it's uh, just a small print, and just to give you an idea of the kind of work that I do. Um, the first thing I do is get some paper. The paper is a German etch and it's been dampened overnight just to soften it. So I'm going to go into the blotters. Try all the excess to do it. So the ink I'm going to use is a Charbonnel black etching ink and it's a bit like, it's an oil based ink but it's much tackier than uh, oil paint. So I've added some extra pigment because 
I don't know, it, it doesn't seem to be as velvety as it should be, in, in the black colour and some uh, copper plate oil. So the consistency is quite gloopy. But, um, yeah, that's a long way. So here's the plate that um, I've made. And I'm squeegee, I'm just going to fill the lines with the etching ink. And then with some scrim. see the image coming through there. So the ink has been pushed into the line and I'm just removing the um, the ink off the surface so, because I want the white or close to white surface. I'm just polishing up all the deer. Maybe I should take this first a bit more. I can just take a little bit of I'm not using marble dust. To polish the surface. See how it's coming along. The larger plates take over an hour to, to etch the, the large uh, dry points that I've been working on recently. So this is a little trick that I learned from John Kelly in an art school, and it was um, not to get. It works on metal as well as a. Uh, Acetate, so it burnt match. It's great for removing, making highlights. Got a Q tip as well. Now I want to clean the edges. Paper has to be turned but not wet, so no surface, no surface at all. Because if it is anyway, I'm just going just reject the oil thing, the oil based ink. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
to do it again. So there's a slight uh, little embossing of the plate on the back. You can see where the pressure has pushed the plate into the paper and we have a nice little mark there. Okay. So there we have it. <laughs>